I'm just setting up, uh, I'm trying to keep like a screen in front of me so that I can answer your questions in real time. Because usually when I'm working, I can't look at the screen at the same time. So I'm trying something new today. Behind me, I have these chairs that I've been working on that are going with a dining room set that I plan to sell. It's a peony themed dining room set that is gonna be named after my mother. Um, with peony flower features on the backs of all the chairs, rich colored velvets on the fronts of all the chairs, two uh, other, two different captain's chairs, and then there's four of these chairs that look like this. So we're gonna be working on this today. I've got this one done. So you can see, it turned out beautifully. Here's the bath. And today we're going to be working on, well I have one over at the table, but this is one of them. <laughs> it looks just like this. I've got to get a couple of washes of paint on it before I upholster it, but that's expected to dry very quickly, so I am imagining that we will be getting to the upholstery part today. Now these chairs only take me a couple hours to upholster on my own when I'm answering questions it tends to take a lot longer. So I don't know how far we're going to get today, but we're going to work on getting as far as we can. I teach upholstery workshops at my local makerspace here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. You can come take upholstery workshops from me in person, but I also teach upholstery workshops virtually, and I teach them live in person. So it's not a pre-recorded tutorial. If you'd like some hands-on help working on your projects, you don't have to come all this way, but you're welcome to, and I have a lot of cool places you can stay. But you can join me virtually on Monday evenings and Saturday afternoons, and I can help you with your projects. We just work one step at a time, from start to finish until we complete it. All my classes are buy three, get one free, and they're also in-person workshops are bring a friend free, so you can bring a friend to help you with your project too. My in-person workshops are taught Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, Friday evenings, and then the weekends in the afternoons from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you're in the area or you're in a drivable distance, you can come out here to MakerWorks and take classes from me. You can start these classes either in person or virtually at any time. You don't have to start a curriculum. It's at your own pace. So whenever you're ready, you can sign up. And whenever you bring your project in, I will start with you from wherever you're at in that project until you complete it. And if you need additional help, I have a group on Facebook called the Local Upholstery Club. That's free to join. At any time, if you're stuck in a project, you can make a post in there and ask questions and I will help if you tag me in it but there's also a ton of other pros in that group that are willing to give their advice too. It's a really uh, supportive group for people who are coming from the DIY community and don't necessarily feel like they have the right support uh, coming from the upholstery industry. So maybe you're getting into this for a hobby or maybe you're getting into this to make a little bit extra money off of it. Either way, Tuesdays, I'm here live to show you how it is I do my thing. You can ask questions about that, but you're welcome to ask questions about anything. I have been doing upholstery professionally for about 10 years now. I have been practicing for 12 years now and I learn something new every day. I am self-taught, so if you're a pro and you're watching this and you see something that you wouldn't do, I would love a professional critique, but I am not interested in uh, anybody who is coming at me with a rude comment. The upholstery industry is in dire need of upholsterers. The trade has not been passed down properly and so we're just trying to teach as many people how to do this as possible so that we can save the trade because I love to do this I would love to do it again um, in my own shop one day but for now we're going to be doing this out of my local makerspace which is an incredible resource if you have one near you I pay a monthly membership here at this makerspace for full access to the space at any time I want so I can use the wood shop the metal shop the textiles area the 3D printers, the CNC routers, the laser cutters, all of that stuff I have access to because I pay a monthly fee. And it's a really, really, really cool place. You probably have one somewhere near you. There's over a thousand in the United States. So I do encourage you to look out for that. Today, I also want to draw your attention to my friend Lynn Sellers, who is a student of mine who is now venturing off and starting her own upholstery business and taking clients. And recently, uh, got an incredible opportunity to open her own storefront in her hometown of Albion, Michigan, and we are throwing her a small business shower on Saturday. So you can join us live if you're not local in the area, but if you go to the link in my bio, you can see small business shower. You can see what Lynn's wish list is, and you can even donate to the cause. So there's a lot of ways that you can help support her, make sure we elevate her business and get her off on the right foot.
I am running out of breath. I have a <coughs> issue where I get um, my heartburn stuff goes into my airway. So if I get to talking too much, I run out of breath. So forgive me if I can't breathe. I'm going to go through here real quick and see what people are writing. Good morning. Have you ever done seats that have springs in them with having to use hog rings? Good morning. So I have never had to use hog rings, but I tie springs all the time. I have what's called a clinch it tool. Let me grab it for you. I'll show you what it looks like. clinch it tool. This is what I use to attach my springs. These chairs don't have springs, so we won't be going over that today. But what it is basically, and I encourage you, if you're an innovator or an engineer, develop something less bulky and harder to use in this. It's not really hard to use in this concept, but it is really hard on your hands. And in this industry, if you are putting a lot of impact on your body, there's a finite many of years that you can do this for a living. So this has little brackets in them, and those basically lay right over top of the spring, and then you pull this lever, and it pushes it out, and those teeth from that bracket opens up underneath the jute webbing, and it captures the spring between the jute webbing and the bracket. So I use this. I've never had to use hog rings, but I've seen people use them. I take apart um, chairs all the time that have them in them. They don't look very hard to use if you didn't have the special tool that they use to clamp them. I think pliers would work just fine. <coughs> okay. Oh, sweet. I'm doing some 60s low backs that I have to use hog rings. Yeah, those will work just fine. Could, oops, could you repeat what you said? Laser cutting place or similar? I came in on the very end. Sure, Bubblicious. Um, I am teaching this class and all of my classes. I teach out of my local maker space. I don't have my own workshop. I did this. Uh, out of my own fabrication shop for six years. My husband and I worked seven days a week, 15 hour days for six years, and we ended up having to close our business because we just couldn't sustain that demand on our own. We couldn't hire anybody because nobody knew how to do this. We couldn't train in production because it became too expensive. So I started teaching workshops back then. Uh, it picked up very slowly, but after the business closed, I started dedicating as much time as I could to it, to teaching people. And I found this local makerspace near me, and they said I could teach some classes out of here. So I do in-person workshops four days a week, and I do virtual workshops two days a week, where you can actually sit um, with me in a class, and I'll walk you through your project personally. It's not a pre-recorded virtual class. It is a live sort of in-person virtual class, if you will. Do you have any helpful tips for compressing a seat so you can put pullover covers on? Can you rephrase the question? Do you, is the seat too big? Rephrase the question and maybe I'll be able to answer that. Um, is the pullover covers too small? Are they not stretchy? Um, is it the store-bought? I guess I just need to know a little bit more details. So, I'm going to take you over to the table so we can start working on this chair. I have a couple layers of paint that I have to put on it in order uh, before I start upholstering it. I don't want to paint it after I upholster it, although you can. If you get so far and you decide you want to finish, you can tape off your upholstery. Some people are very good at that. I am not good at not making a mess with paint, so I always say do your finishing first. We're just going to do some white bottom glazing techniques. It dries pretty quickly, so I do feel like we're going to get to the upholstery part before the end of class today. But we're going to work on the paint part first so that I don't mess up my uh, only very few little bits of velvet that I have to cover it. It's a metal seat that has springs that needs to be compressed in order to make it six inches wide. Hmm. Tell you what, Huff Pickles, if you take a picture of what you're talking about and you post it in the local upholstery club group on Facebook, I think I might be able to understand. I'm not, I can't really picture what it is that you're saying and I'm not sure what the disconnect is. Instead of 12 inches when I took it apart. Oh, it has, oh, so you're looking to make the springs shorter is what I think that you're saying. When you tie the springs, it compresses them. So if they need to be re-tied, um, I do have some tie tutorials over on my Facebook page that will help you 
Otherwise, I might just need to see what you're talking about. I think that that is what... Yes, okay, great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> it's sometimes really hard to uh, get any kind of context through text, so I'm glad we were able to rough that one out. So, okay, let's get to the chair. Give me just a second. Because I have my screen up, too, so that I can answer questions. And I have my chair down here. The struggle has been real on these seats. I bet if you if you need help, even in just a little part of your project that you're working on, a virtual upholstery class is really ideal because you get to sit with me. Uh, there's up to six people in the class, and right now because it's a brand new thing, numbers are pretty low, so you get some extra added attention. But I will say the benefit of being in a class with other students who all have their own unique project is that you get to learn techniques from everybody's project at one time. So you learn a lot of fundamentals in one class even if they don't pertain to your seat. So if you need some help, I think I have still until the end of February, you can get your first virtual upholstery class for a dollar. The link is in my bio, so if you click over there, you can sign up. You just have to use first class in the uh, promo code area at checkout. It'll take your $75 class down to $1 so that you can give it a try and you can see if this format is something that you think you can work with. <clears throat> it's my first of these kind of frames. Metal frames are different. Kate Culp is here. Everybody, if you see Kate Culp in the comments, go follow her. She's coming to Detroit. I used to get tickets to see rock stars. Now I get tickets to see my favorite upholsterer. So she's coming to the Detroit Auto Show, and I just cannot wait. She's got. She's coming to a lot of places. Go to her bio and you can see. She does amazing things with uh, Volkswagen Bugs, and then she uses that platform to do amazing things for children by building schools. I believe it's in Haiti. Um, I can't remember specifically, but go check out what she does. She's an incredible human being, her and her whole family. Okay, so I'm going to flip this around, and we're just going to take a look-see at what we're working with. Now, I always start painting, just so you guys know, we're gonna start with this painting part first. These are just kind of wash-ons that we're doing. Uh, really, really thin coats, they tend to dry really, really fast. So we will be getting to upholstery part of this today, but we have to do this part first so we don't mess up my very important fabric because I don't have any more of it. And I cannot see comments. Well, I guess it's because I'm signed in as a guest. Okay, guys, so the TV idea to look at comments on a monitor next to me is not going to work out, but I've got this. So I don't paint furniture like a lot of people um, because I have always had the case where I don't have a ton of time to do it. So, And I also I went to college uh, for art and took a lot of different art classes and learned a lot of different uh, techniques that I try to apply to everything I do. Hold on one second. And so a lot of what I do isn't maybe what you might see your regular furniture upholsterer or painter do, but that's because I look at this more as a sculpture and less as a piece of furniture. So I'm, a, I'm doing a lot of crazy stuff to all of this. So I put my paint coats on in layers of washes um, in really thin coats so that they dry pretty fast. And what I mean by that is I'm going to start with a base coat and then I'm just going to build up layers of different colors of paint on top of this. Typically I might use anywhere from 8 to 10 colors at a time. You get that really like vintage French provincial look, uh, but you can use any color you want. And so I like to use crazy colors. I am about to show you my range today by using really neutral light colors. And I'm working with this green, which was the original color of the chair, as my base coat. Normally, I like to paint a nice metallic color on as my base coat and then build on top of that so you can see metallic in the details. But the fabric really lends itself well to this uh, sage green color so we're keeping it and we're just going to build on top of that I'm going to show you let me go get the other chair <coughs> okay so here's
here's one finished. And you can see the green under there. You can even see parts that I've sanded when I did the scuff sand to make the paint stick. And then I've layered this uh, white, it's a Sherman Williams acrylic enamel, like an off color white, like an ivory color. And then there's more gold in the details. So it turned out really nice, I think. And I think I'm going to attempt to do some gold leafing on uh, the high parts that stick out. But I don't know yet. I don't want to take it too far. That's what we're going to do today. So we're going to show you all the layers we use to accomplish that look. <coughs> and I just want to get these end caps off so that it'll sit without rocking back and forth because some of them were broken. I also am trying to get my friend Lynn's little uh, small business shower invitation up on the screen. So uh, my friend Lynn Sellers is a student of mine. Uh, she's also uh, one of my apprentices. She assists my class all the time. And she is got an incredible opportunity to open a storefront in her hometown of Albion, Michigan that is working on developing their downtown area, which is pretty vacant right now, into something cool. And so she got an opportunity, incredible opportunity, that most people don't get, to open up her business. And running a small business is like one of the hardest freaking things you'll ever do. So I am throwing her a small business shower to help her get off on the right foot um, and maybe to give her a little bit of extra runway before she gets in pretty deep because once once you get started like it's a very exciting cool thing but once you get started there's a lot of moving parts and if you're the only one wearing all the hats it becomes very stressful and i just kind of want to ease her entry into the industry so that we can keep her around because upholsterers uh, we're in dire need of upholsterers in this industry the education is not being passed down properly there are no formal ways to learn this in the united states anymore so we're just trying to teach as many people as we can and try and get as many people out there taking clients and everything as we can so we can serve the need and maybe rebuild the industry back here in the United States. So the industry itself took a toll uh, during COVID, not the upholstery industry, but the furniture industry, um, because the supply chain demand made it difficult to order furniture online, to order furniture um, that's been mass produced, and it made it more expensive. Um, the rise of cost of materials went up 400%, so it really became difficult to do anything overseas. So people turned to resale pretty hard during COVID, and it raised, uh, by two, two, 2021, it raised over $16.9 billion. So uh, we could see that in our business. Um, we could see an increase in demand of co from COVID in people redesigning their homes, uh, uh, redoing their restaurants while they couldn't open, so everybody got behind. If you call local culture right now, they're going to give you a year, maybe longer wait wait time in order to get on a list. I see some of posters online who have a number system and they will call a group of numbers and let them know you're ready. I myself don't keep a wait list anymore. I have a one-in, one-out policy, um, and for the most part, I just work on my own stuff now anyways to show you guys how to do it. I do sell my own furniture. You can see my work on my website. You can purchase it there. Um, if you live from far away, you do have to arrange your own shipping, but I am happy to help you do that. We, I have freighted furniture before. All right, so right now I'm just taking a craft brush. It doesn't even matter if... Uh, it's a nice brush. You can use a cheap dollar store sponge. I'm just covering all of the areas that I want painted gold with gold, but I'm going to go back through and wipe it down because I don't want it to necessarily stick to everything. I just want it to sort of fall into the details or any cracks or defects. I also don't like um, distressing things. I don't think I'm good at it. So. This is my sort of way of creating a vignette 
of color on a piece without distressing it and destroying the details of the carved furniture. So I just go back through after I've put a coat on and I'm using a microfiber cloth because it also buffs the paint as it dries. Um, and it's just a little bit damp with water. And I'm just coming back through. This is just an acrylic metallic paint. This is not anything crazy. And by the time I'm done, the colors are put on so thin they dry really fast. So we're gonna put this all over the chair. And by the time we get to the end or to the other side, it'll be ready for another coat. So we're gonna put a couple coats of this gold on first, and then we're gonna move on to the white. I like to make sure, let me get you guys closer to the details of what I'm painting. I always paint from the bottom up because I don't want to scratch my paint up by the time I'm ready to flip it over. So if you start from the bottom and then you flip it over to do the top, you're not going to scratch the bottom of the feet of your chair. So that's how I like to start off with like paint. I want to put some more of this gold paint in this chair detail. I don't know if you guys can see that too good. But I will be turning this around when we flip it up so you guys can see the details from the top. <coughs> Alright, I'm going back there to look at the questions. Give me a second. Uh, what's her name? Her name is Lynn Sellers. Uh, we're talking about my friend Lynn Sellers, who is a student of mine. She's opening up her own shop called Up and Up Upholstery in Albion, Michigan. There's a link in my bio to her small business shower that we're throwing on Saturday morning. I'll also be going there live so you guys can watch. She's got a very cool shop uh, with open storefront windows that she actually works out of the storefront window of her brand new shop. It's so cool. Um, Up and Up Upholstery is the name of her shop, and we are trying to get everything on her wish list of things that she still needs to make her business experience more comfortable. And also, she has her Venmo on there that you can donate money to if that's how you want to get involved. <coughs> That's pretty beautiful. And thank you guys so much for um, the gifts when you're on here. I appreciate that. But one thing that you can do that is even more valuable to me than uh, sending me gifts on TikTok is just tapping the like button whenever I remind you to. When you tap the like button, you're engaging with me, which is sending my content out on the For You page, which helps people to find me. It's actually more valuable to me when you do that than when you buy things from TikTok because I only get fractions of pennies of that. So while I do appreciate it, and it is a cool, fun, interactive experience, um, I would much prefer you to just tap the screen as much as you can uh, while you're here. Like I like to do it in spurts where you're just tap, 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 tapping as violently as you can until that little meter shows up in the upper left-hand corner. Cute little pink heart, can't miss it. Just tap it until it gets to the end going to show up right here and when it gets to the end it's going to throw you a party so cool fun for everybody Rebecca says I'm so excited for Lynn we went to college together it is so crazy how small this world is Rebecca because uh, Lynn started coming to class because she found me on Facebook and then uh, Amy happened to be here on that same day and they um, knew each other and that was nuts it was really nuts for me so it is a small world that we all are kind of running into each other now. I like it. All right. I don't want to get too deep into the woods here because I want you guys to see this detail on top. So I'm just going to do a quick wash so that I don't put my layers on weird. So this has got a weird gold tone now, but it's going to look mostly green after it gets painted with white. But you'll see how it's sticking in the detail, let me see up here, and it's sort of giving a sheen to other areas of this, so the other areas that the paint washes away on, it'll sort of be vignette from white to gold to green. It's kind of hard to explain when you don't see it, but you'll watch it <laughs> it's sort of come to life, which is fun. All right, let's get backed up a little bit. All right, now we're gonna paint the back. I'm just gonna raise this up some. <clears throat> I've 
also got to take off this godforsaken hoodie because I'm about to die. keep a little bit of water on my brush so that the paint just doesn't get dry and sticky too fast and it helps it spread out a little bit and self level so you don't get any brush strokes but we wipe this down so you're not going to get any brush strokes anyways but if you're planning to leave on the brush strokes this is the way to go try to remember to look at all the sides of your legs I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten the side of my leg the other chair completely left one side unsanded. I'm just glopping it on. I'm not really paying attention to paint strokes or anything. I just need coverage because I'm just going to move it around with a slightly damp microfiber cloth to sort of get it in the details and to just give it a wash. It's not like a full coverage paint. It's just a wash. You don't want to let it get too far um because it'll start to dry and it won't wash off and then if you have brush strokes you're not gonna let go so the microfiber cloth also helps to buff everything down while you do this so it smooths out the layers so when you go to overlap them you can't feel the layers it just everything feels silky smooth and it might look textured when you're done, but the feel of it is so silky smooth and soft, you wouldn't believe it. Now when we do the white, we're going to leave it on a little bit longer because we want the white to build up. We want it to look like it was a white chair at one time and it's not. It's wearing away naturally. I'm just going to get the whole back of this paint in. I always forget these two. And I don't need to paint this because that's all upholstered. Just the showy wood parts. back over this leg because I wiped almost everything off. I want to see the gold like sticking to the edges and also in the details. So that's what I'm aiming for. So I'm just going to go back through here. I'm not washing it off. I'm just wiping it smooth. Most of it comes off, but not all of it. And it, sometimes it just moves it around into place. There's a lot of fun paint techniques that you can do. This is my favorite and I call it underpainting. I don't know if that is what it is, but I just start with one color and I just keep building up layers. My favorite probably would be my Lisa Frank chair, which uh, you can still see pictures of it on my website, but it did sell. So I no longer have it but you can still see pictures of it, but the paint job on that was just fantastic. I've got one more leg on the other side. Let me see, oh my gosh, I have those same chairs. I guess I joined at the perfect time. Do you see uh, the finished project right here? Isn't that cool? So that's the goal today. I just have that one leg to paint in the front. That's a beautiful gold color. What is the name of it? It is. craft paint really cheap I think this is only like six bucks um, the enamel paint that I'm putting on top of it is going to be way more protective but this makes a good wash um, it's actually if you use like a antiquing glaze it's basically an acrylic base with a pigment in it so you can use acrylic paints on furniture Lisa Frank chair was out of this world thank you so much it was really cool all right I'm gonna go through and paint the other leg on the other side 
this isn't the most exciting part of it, but I promise you it does get exciting. But if you guys are here and you're learning something or you're just hanging out and having a good time with me, if you could, whenever I remind you, just tap the screen as much as possible. Um, I like to tell people to tap it violently until that little heart shows up. And then when it makes it to the end, it'll throw you a party and everybody loves parties. Um, when you guys are engaging with my posts like that on these lives, it's sending my content out to the For You page and that helps my business grow. And when you help my business grow, you help other businesses grow because I am teaching upholsterers the trade so that they can start businesses of their own. Like my friend, <laughs> Lynn Sellers, who began teaching with, or she began learning from me a little over a year ago. She also had some experience. She came to the table with some experience, but she was sort of working on refining her techniques. And now she is getting an incredible opportunity to open up her own space in her hometown of Albion, Michigan. And Saturday, we're throwing her a small business shower, like a baby shower, but for small business. So there's a link in my bio. If you can't make it to Albion, Michigan, if you're not within like a two hour driving distance, that's how far I'm driving, uh, then <laughs> uh, maybe it's only an hour, I don't know. If you're not close enough to drive, you can still get involved. I'm gonna go live from there on Saturday, but you can also donate to her cause. So on my, uh, sorry, I have a condition where I get um, reflex in my airway and it makes it difficult for me to breathe. Anyway, so you can find the link in my bio for Lynn's Small Business Shower and you can either buy her one of the things off of her wish list, send it to her, or bring it to the party, or you can donate money to her directly through her Venmo. All that information is on the link in my bio. So I'm going back through another way. And I'm going to probably go through and do two coats on here, but I want to turn it around first. And I'll do the second coat with it sitting up. So if I was doing white right now, the final coat, I would do, I know I'm going to probably have to do like eight coats to get the coverage that I want like this. So I'll do the first six coats upside down and then I flip it back over and do everything else. I'll do the four coats for the top and then I'll go through and do all the rest of the coats at the same time with it setting up so that I can get the best coverage. I do it upside down first because one, I often forget to look for all of the parts underneath the chair and I miss spots on the leg. So you're covering all of those spots that you would miss if it was right side up. And then also, if I were going to my final coats, I'm not scratching at the surface of the top of my chair because I'm ending on its feet. So that's why it is I do what I do. I'm gonna do one more coat on here. All right, I'm gonna finish wiping that down. And then we'll flip it over and we'll do from the top the rest of the gold. I'm only going to do two coats on this because it's building up quite nicely, actually. <sighs> Can't breathe. How's that looking? Ooh. So you can see I've not painted the front of this at all. And I want to get these back into the light zone. Already in touching all of the legs, it's dry. Like there's not a wet spot on it. This is how fast it dries when you do this. So you can just keep layering, layering, layering um, all the colors till your heart's content. Like it, it takes hours to finish, but it dries and it cures faster and it gives it a, a more secure finish when you do it this way. That's been my experience anyways. When you're painting with a paintbrush, you tend to load your layers on too thick and then they never fully cure. So it tends to peel off. It can't pass a, scr a scratch test. When you're doing it 
well this is just the wash but when we put the coats on it'll look a little different um, we're gonna be doing it in really thin coats I really want to like lay the paint on thick in these carved details because that's where I want it to stay and this is like called a glaze but it, I'm just using acrylic paint I also want to hit these flowers on the legs a little harder because I couldn't reach them when it was upside down. Let's see how close we can get to that so you guys can see the white part. doing the color justice because it just looks yellow on here but I promise you it's gold it's metallic gold I'm just gonna dabble I don't want this to be super wet because it'll take everything off I want it to leave behind everything in the details and I want it to sort of give the rest of it just a slight sheen the color of this metallic wash over the sage green is very cool and you really are just using a wiping motion you're not washing it you're just wiping it away and I also like to create like a flat surface so that it doesn't go into the details too much so I create a flat surface and then just give it a wipe one more coat but first I got to do the top back of this chair so we can get you back up here we're gonna start with the top and then we're gonna work our way back around the chair doing a second coat of this gold just a little bit before I get more paint. I'm really pressing it into like the deep details even when I go through the long parts I want to make sure I'm really brushing it into the carved details around the edges so that it stays there. And I'm expecting it to stay in these grooves, but also little shimmers of it will stay inside this indentation. And then you might see it build up right on the edges too, which is cool because it makes it look like sort of a gold lining. Hard to see at this step in the process, easier to see when it's finished. If you guys are here and you're learning anything or you're just hanging out with me and you want to support small business and people learning upholstery or how to refinish furniture to earn a little bit of extra income, please tap the like button whenever you think about it or whenever I bring it up because when you're engaging with this content here, it sends my stuff out to the For You page. People get to see what it is that I do and then they get to find my classes, take the classes. And then you might find yourself like my friend Lynn Sellers, who started taking classes with me a year ago and is now opening her own upholstery shop in Albion, Michigan. And Saturday, we will be doing a small business shower for her to help make sure she gets off on the right foot. We'll go live so you guys can take a look, but if you want to get involved in helping to elevate Lynn, you can go ahead and go to the link in my bio that says Up and Up Upholstery Small Business Shower. And then you can look at her wish list. Uh, you can send her money or gifts via Venmo or PayPal. Um, sky's the limit. <laughs> it's it's all about uh, really. It is all about taking a village to make businesses like this work. <laughs> right now, the upholstery industry is suffering because we there's a higher demand than it is we have skilled trades people. So upholstery shops where 
the upholsterers might be aging out of the business, are having trouble finding people to either take over their business, they're closing left and right. Um, the trade it feels like it's dying, even though it's in like one of the highest demands that you've ever seen. Upholsterers that exist in the United States right now have year or more long wait lists, um, which is actually killing their business when that happens because it's we're just being drowned in work and we've got nobody to help. So after I closed my business for the same reason, I wanted to teach as many people how to do this as possible. And since I started teaching out of my local maker space, I've taught more than 300 people, uh, a large percentage of those. Last time I checked it was 60%, but that was when we were 250, so I don't have those details yet. Um, a lot of those people come back for repeat classes. And I don't just teach them in person, I teach them virtually too, and they're not pre-recorded, they're with you, with your project. So if you have a project that you're stuck on, or even a skill, like one specific skill you want to learn, like say it's just deep button tufting or box cushion making, uh, I will walk you through during that class. It's a three hour class. We do it via Zoom. My camera is in 4K, so it's not all pixely and it's easy to see. And I will show you demonstrations of the skills that I'm trying to teach you as you ask me questions. So there's a lot <coughs> you can learn. And I find that it's working really well for the students who are starting to join these virtual upholstery classes. If you have not taken one of these classes with me before, you can get your first class for just a dollar. They're typically $75 for a three hour lesson and there's up to six people in the class. Um, but you can get your first lesson for a dollar right now until the end of February by just putting in <coughs> first class at checkout. Sorry, I'm having a real hard time keeping my breath today. I'm going back through here. This time I'm gonna leave the paint on a little bit longer, just enough to get around the whole chair. And then I'm gonna come back through the top and start to wipe it down. So if you already do furniture like this, like if you paint furniture, this is how I started was painting my own furniture and then people would see it when I post about it and then ask me to do their furniture. Um, if you're already kind of doing this or furniture resale, upholstery is gonna be a very lucrative skill for you to learn because you're already in that world and upholstery is the one thing that people cannot find because we all have your long wait lists. So if you want to learn this, you can make money doing this if you stick with it and you get good at it. And I'll say that the majority of my student projects that leave this building look like they've been doing it for a couple of years because they're learning through the mistakes that I made when I taught myself upholstery and they're learning professional skills um, from a very patient individual, I may add. Uh, who is willing to sit with you and work with you at your own pace while you learn this skill on your own terms. So you can join my classes at any time. You don't have to start with one class in particular. They're all bring your own project classes. You can bring your project in at any time, at any stage, and I will walk you through from start to finish. You may find yourself needing more than one class, and for that reason, all my classes are buy three, get one free. And my in-person classes are bring a friend free, so you can actually bring a friend to help you. And both of you get to learn off the same project. My virtual and in-person classes hold up to six people in them. So you're not just learning from your project, you're learning from everybody else's project as well. You're learning box spring, or how to do springs, how to do box cushions, B button tufting, all of that can be happening at the same time while you're learning your project. It's really cool. It's a really cool way to pick up a skill. And if you're doing this from home and you get stuck and you need a little bit of help on the project, I have a group on Facebook called the Local Upholstery Club. You can join that for free and you can tag me in a post and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. All right, almost. I'll just glob some paint on here. Okay, now we take through and do a wipe again. Starting with the place where we started, which is on the front, and then just getting this microfiber cloth kind of damp. Not sopping wet, just damp. And then I also make my cloth as flat as I can. And then just wipe until it's smooth. There's a lot of buildup sometimes that you don't 
want sticking out. I want it to look like it has texture, but it's actually quite smooth. And as you do this, the paint starts to build up on the cloth too, which helps it spread out even more as the layers build up. I like it. This is my preferred method. Uh, brush painting for me sometimes, I don't like to see brush ropes. I like it to look like it was spray painted. And this gives you that look because the cloth is buffing out the whole thing as you go. Well, I really like um, the effects of leaving it on a little bit. It's like smearing it, but it looks like almost worn off gold leafing. I'll give you guys a close up in a minute. There are also some bare spots of the wood from sanding it that are absorbing the gold really well. Adjust it if it starts to go not flat because otherwise your towel will be scraping through your tacky paint and it can make it look messy. Oh, we're like way too close. Let's take a look-see. The discount code for the virtual class, is that only for, hold on, I'm gonna turn this around and answer that question. <laughs> okay. The discount code for the virtual class, is that only for the classes in February? No, that's for all the classes that are scheduled through April right now. So you can schedule that. It's also, uh, all the virtual classes are buy three, get one free. So if you're working on a project you think is going to take a while, it's good to sign up for all four at once so that you can get that discount. And then that's applied at checkout. There you go. Uh, oh, geez. Goodness. You guys have got a lot of comments on here. Oh my gosh, I have those same chairs. I guess I joined at the perfect time. You sure did. Face says, ooh, I'm loving this already. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful gold color. What's the name of it? Ugh. This is not a product placement because this is just cheap craft paint for this glaze. Any like glaze that you would get that's like antiquing glaze is just an acrylic base with pigment. This is a metallic gold pigment. So this is any acrylic metallic paint would work. And I like to use, so this is a metallic, but I also like to use uh, like bright pinks and purples and things of that nature. The Lisa Frank chair was the coolest example of that. Good morning, Deb, I'm glad you made it. <clears throat> I love your support for other small businesses. You're the best booster, encourager, and cheerleader. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Uh, I wish that I could have saved my own small business by hiring more people, but there were no people who knew how to do this. So I'm trying to teach as many people as I can. You get to learn from me for free on Tuesdays uh, live and you can ask questions along the way, but I also teach virtual poultry lessons where you work with me over Zoom on your project. It's not pre-recorded, And I teach in-person poultry lessons. My in-person lessons are on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So if you have nothing to do for spring break, you should definitely sign up for the buy three, get one free classes and come for the whole weekend for just 225 bucks. My weekend upholstery retreats, which are the same amount of days but less hours, are like 1600 bucks. So you can save a lot by signing up for my already scheduled classes through April um, during spring break. Come out here and I'll teach you for a whole weekend. I got cool places you can stay too. I got cool friends here in the area. Whew, okay, I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. I'm gonna flip the camera around. I'm going to also get Lynn's 
small business shower thing back up. Maybe not. Oh no! The computer just shut itself off. Anyways, let's take a look at this. I'll tell you about Lynn's small business shower here in a minute. But if you want to learn more about it while I'm doing this, you can go to the link in my bio. Short commute from Connecticut. That's right. Uh, we've had Gabriel out here from Connecticut before, so... You guys should come out for a four-day weekend. If you answered my question, I missed it. Uh, can you ask, the, oh, the discount code for the virtual class, is it the for only classes in February? No, it's through my whole schedule through April, but the discount ends at the end of February. So you only have through February to get the discount, but you can use it on any of the classes. Gabriel's your shopping pal, that's so good. Okay, so let's get a close-up so you guys can see it doesn't translate as well, but it's sort of gilded now in these details. And you can still see the green. This is just like the first layer of color. We still have to put some white on here. Oh, this looks nice. This looks sort of like worn away gold leaf. I can't get it to focus. Maybe closer? It's focusing on that back leg. Oh, that looks way better from here. Ooh, that side turned out really nice. So a lot of this actually gets covered with the white, but it does show through. And I wanna show you on the chair that's already done, but is going to get more gold because so much of it got covered up. It's just a subtle, just a little bit of it is still subtly showing. And I can't, I don't think I can pick it up. I think it just needs to be way more gold on this particular. Sometimes you can, oh, there it's some on the, it sort of looks like gold rimmed porcelain, which I love. So that's the look, and I'm gonna put more gold on this one too, there's a good, there's a good glimpse of it. And then the detail, I'm considering putting some gold leaf on the detail, but I don't want to go too far. Because I really do like the green, how it pulls with all the fabric. Love the patina you're getting. I'm so glad. Thank you. <laughs> it's a process and it doesn't always translate over camera. It's shorter if you go through Canada. I'm in Massachusetts. Ooh, Deb, pick up Sue's on the way here. And you guys can do the bring a friend free discount. Oh, you have to work on the same project though. That's the only kicker. But even carpooling is nice. We have people fly here all the time. If you are flying here, you're gonna wanna fly into Detroit Metro Airport. It is about 30 miles uh, east of here, I believe. So, okay, now we gotta put some white on. And we're gonna flip this back over. No, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think we're just, cause we're just putting light coats of white on the top. And I'm gonna attempt to do that. I ended up leaning into a dry brush technique last time. So I'm gonna see how we can build that up. I don't know if it's gonna work out. I don't like to do product placement, but this is the paint we're gonna use. It's uh, Sherman Williams Enrolled, and it is uh, interior acrylic latex paint. It's flat, but we're gonna put a wax coat on this so that um, it's a satin sheen when we're done with it. I've been talking to our mayor about making our creative district building a maker space. I'll tell you what, Deb, you're more likely to get someone to help you start a nonprofit organization to do it than you are to be able to get the city to work on it. Well, at least that was how it was in our case. We did try to do that. Cities, uh, unless your city puts money into like public recreation funds very freely, uh, it's expensive to run and extremely difficult to market as a membership model. 
coming from the perspective of someone who, who's doing the marketing for a makerspace with a membership model uh, because it's not for everyone. Oh my goodness. Paint started coming out. Being a member isn't for everyone because not everyone knows how to use tools, so it doesn't make sense for them immediately to do this. So you have to find a way to sort of bridge the gap between people who want to make and people willing to learn how to do new things. And that can be difficult in these spaces because they become so intimidating because of all the tools. So find someone willing to invest in the community because they can really make a good go of that if they're really thinking about the community's needs. And it's an amazing resource. Okay. Let me open this. I put this on the same way um, that I put on the gold, only just lighter, because I don't want the white to go into the details. It's like I'm not interested in that. So I will get my brush. I'm trying this brush. This is not what I used last time, but I wanted to see if I can make it do what I wanted to. I don't think I can. It doesn't look like it's gonna do good. So I use like a dry brushing technique almost for this. Uh, if you want really good solid paint finish, you have to put these coats on as thin as humanly possible so that they dry very quick. If they dry quick, they cure faster, and when you go to put other layers on them, it's not blocking it from curing. When you use a regular brush, and you start to notice paint strokes, the paint is not gonna cure properly, it's gonna scratch right off. So here, I just like to build up, like that's as heavy as I wanna go. I'll come back and I'm gonna build up more, but I'm not interested in saturating this whole area with white paint. I don't think that that is really going as hard as I'd like it to. I'm gonna attempt, ooh, sorry. I'm gonna attempt to do a little bit more with a bigger brush. I need to go about first. I'm not getting quite as much paint on as I would like with that little brush, but I still want to do this like dry brush technique. I don't want any goopy paint on. I want it to be almost dry. So I can leave out a little deeper. Now it's gonna go into the recess that's like this dip here, that's fine. I want it to build up there, but it's not gonna go into the gold parts, the deep carvings. So I go over the whole entire chair like this with just this first thin coat. Then I'm gonna come back through and wipe it. By the time it comes to wipe it, much of it's going to be dry, so it's not going to take a lot off. But the wiping, it smooths it down and it buffs out the, any things sticking out so that it removes any brush strokes. The gold layers we were glopping on, these were just lightly brushing on. And we are keeping more care to keep these a little bit smooth. Get this down so you guys can see closer this detail. And I'll bring it closer so you can see. So then we have half. With the white on it already. And then we're gonna work on this half here and see how there's like still wet paint on my brush. I don't want wet paint on my brush. Like I just want all of the drippy stuff to come off and then I'm just coming back through here with the lightest coat as possible. And it's gonna take like 10 layers <laughs> to build this up to look like the other chair which you can see here behind me, or behind this chair. And this little bit of dry paint like still goes a long way over the chair. Keep 
keep it on my blast drops in the same direction too so it keeps it smooth. Plus it tends to look kind of scratchy as it builds up and I like that. It looks old. If you guys are here and you have any questions at all, just put them in the comment section and between steps I go back through and I try to answer them. Close to that leg. It sort of almost has like a plaster feel as it builds up. You 
guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and throw them in the comment section. I'm about to, when I'm done with this stuff, I'm going to look at the comment section and answer questions. Right now, I'm just finishing this quick paint technique, but we are going to apply some fabric today. I'll be here until 2 p.m. to answer questions and show you what it is I'm doing. I want to get the finish on this done before I put any fabric on it because I have only exactly the amount of fabric I need for these chairs and I don't want to try and finish it after. Well, if you do end up finishing your chair after you upholster it, do a very good job of taking it off. Like tucking the tape into place instead of the not I know some people who prefer to wait until after it's upholstered. Not that person. So easy to miss the legs when you're painting it. Down. But we're using the same cloth we did to do the gold, and it's okay if a gold shimmer gets into the paint because that's how we're layering it. It's just fun. Deb, you guys know if you come out here, you can visit Discount Fabric Outlet. Designer Fabrics, eight bucks a yard. All right, let's get a focus. I'm not really going over like the edge edges either because I like the gold sheen of those have. walk around tempted at every layer to say, oh, that looks so pretty. And you can stop at any time. But I'm not ready yet. Look at that gold spot on the leg. Like that's going to go all the way down like it's a rim of gold. Ooh, look at that shiny corner. Flowers look good. Looking good. So this is two layers of gold, one layer of white, and we're working on this buildup. We got a ways to go. Just so you guys can get a comparison. That's what we're working for. So let's wipe her down. I love this technique. I have a chair I want to do. Yeah, it's a I love it's called the underpainting technique, so you're just building up colors. If you look at the Lisa Frank chair, you can see um, it started with a yellow, like a chartreuse yellow, and then like there was several neon colors like orange and yellow and purple and pink. 
and then there's like a really dark purple finish on the outside. So this is smoothing everything off and sort of buffing down anything that wasn't locked down really well. And showing off more detail of the green. The green almost buffs completely off. Because it's a high point on top of it. And that's fine because we also have some gold in here, so we get both. also smoothing everything to like a silky smooth feel. I'm touching all of this right now and it's already dry. It's not cured by any means, but it's already dry. It's dry enough to touch my hands without leaving my fingerprints. And then it'll be dry enough to put fabric on when we're done. It's not even sticky. After I'm done wiping it down, I'll take you guys from the worst spin. Let's see what it looks like. So it's kind of like you're sanding it now with the cloth. It's like washing. And it's still just damp. It's not soaking wet. I don't want to wash the paint off. But this is a testament to how good it's going to stay, like in these areas where it stays built up. It's gonna cure like that. That's why I like the acrylic enamel finish. Because it really hardens really well. And this whole live replay will be on YouTube later this week. So if you don't get to catch the whole thing, you can go over on YouTube and watch it whenever you want. I do, however, put it on there on cotton and unedited because I don't have time to edit five hour long videos down to a consumable amount of time for you. I'm working on it, but I just I don't make that kind of money yet. Okay, so we're going to go back in with another dry brush. Don't let me forget the feet this time. It looks like I forgot. Just building up the layers of white. I like to go over the layers that I like have to overlap so that it doesn't build up any brush strokes. guys a little closer. on the cardboard and then just coming back through and building up these layers. I love how you can tell like how uneven uh, the wood parts are when you do this. I love every bit of character that it brings out when you're dry brushing. My paint's starting to get a little sticky so I don't get just a 
little bit of water and I'm just adding it to the cardboard down here. It doesn't spread out as smooth when it sticks. destroy your brush, so don't use an expensive brush, you don't need one. You want one that's not going to have the layers fall off or the hairs fall off, but you don't need to use your fancy brush to do this, you're going to destroy it. Just going to add a little This allows me to work faster through my project. I don't have to wait as long to do the next step. Because I don't have time. None of us do. You might also see me going in multiple directions. That's to get it to spread out. some upholstery knowledge already. Uh, she was working on refining her skills and now has the opportunity to open up her own business in her hometown of Albion, Michigan. And on Saturday, we're throwing her a small business shower. So uh, you've heard of baby showers. This is the same deal, except for it's to help um, uh, lift up and support her new small business venture. She got an incredible opportunity to get a window front space in Aldi in Michigan. Uh, she works, she does upholstery in her window front, so if you're over there, you can go just walk outside her building and watch her work, which is a lot of fun. It's a very cool space, and we're gonna be helping her on Saturday set up the finishing touches so that she can have her grand opening March 1st. And then <coughs> she also has items on her wish list of things she still needs for her small business. And there's a link to that in my bio. So if you can't make it to Albion, Michigan, to the Up and Up Upholstery Small Business Shower this weekend to hang out with me and Lynn and all of our local upholstery club friends who can make the drive, then you can participate uh, by helping her with items on her wish list. Or you can even send her money directly for her small business 
so she can help save up money for future rent so we can keep her in business as long as possible. First 10 years of running a small business is the hardest and a lot of small businesses fail in that time frame because what we find is it's really hard to wear all the hats and if you're starting with no capital then it's really difficult to keep your head above water. But we want to give a fighting chance so I want as many people to get involved as elevating her small business as possible. The link to that small business shower is in my bio so you can get involved um, in any way you can even if you're just like sending me some supportive, some supportive words her way. But I would look forward to hanging out with any of you who want to come out and visit us on Saturday at Up and Up Upholstery in Albion, Michigan. All the details are on the link in my bio, the address, all of that stuff. Whew, okay, what do we got? Let's check out the questions. I don't think we have any. I have to go get a drink real quick. Let's just take a look at these two together, shall we? And I still have to wipe this one down. Well, we're two coats in, and we're already starting to see that build up. That's the goal. And this is where we're at. I do have to go through wipe this before I go get something to drink, but I do have to get a water or Gatorade or something before I die. through and sand the other chair down. I gotta go get a beverage. I'll be right back.
me turn this around so I can see you guys see me. I will do my little spiel and continue. <clears throat> Deb says I bought a great powdered additive that makes any regular paint a chalk paint. Yeah, Plaster Paris will do that too. Plaster Paris is a great additive, super cheap. Um, okay. Whew. I have a hard time breathing. I have this reflux problem that gets into my airway instead of the rest of my body, so it makes it difficult to breathe sometimes. Let me take a drink of this and you guys can answer, ask any questions you have. Today we're working on this set of chairs. This chair is already upholstered. This chair, we're finishing up the paint coat on. And as soon as we're done with that, we're going to start putting uh, jute webbing, foam, and batting on there. So, <coughs> my name is Kim. I teach upholstery classes here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, out of my local makerspace. This is just the conference room. This is like an all-purpose classroom. Any member can reserve to either work on their projects or to teach a class. I do both out of here. I work on my projects here. I go live with you on Tuesdays, but I also teach classes in person here four days a week. I teach pulse classes. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So if you're coming in from out of town, you can make a whole weekend out of it. My classes are all buy three, get one free. <coughs> Sorry. So if you are working on a longer project, you can come in four consecutive days is a really great way to stay focused on your project. So you can sign up for all four and then you'll get one of them for free. And each class is three hours long. They're $75 each. I teach upholstery classes in person four days a week, but I teach them virtually two days a week on Monday evenings and Saturday afternoons. And my virtual classes are also directly with me working with you on your project. They're not pre-recorded. So you get my physical help on your project at answering all your questions along the way and demonstrating the skills that I am trying to teach you on my end through 4K video uh, Zoom technology. So if you need hands-on support like that, like more direct support, these classes are actually ideal for that. Today, as we work on these chairs, I'm trying to raise awareness for my friend Lynn, who started classes with me just over a year ago, but was already had some, some skills under her belt. She is starting her first upholstery business, and her grand opening is March 1st. And on Saturday, the 24th, we are throwing her a small business shower at her shop in Albion, Michigan, Up and Up Upholstery in Albion, Michigan. I believe it will be the only upholstery shop in that town. And you can go there and watch Lynn working on her furniture in her display window. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, and on Saturday, we're going to go out there to support her and help her elevate her business. She's got a wish list of things that she needs still to make her, uh, running her business more comfortable. So you can go to the link in my bio, Up and Up Upholstery Small Business Shower, and you can donate to things on her wish list, or you can donate to her directly through Venmo. Every little bit counts. It's, it takes about 10 years of running your small business to uh, get there comfortably, and a lot of businesses fail before then. My business closed after six years because we couldn't wear all the hats. We were working seven days a week, 15 hour days. Uh, it wasn't sustainable. We couldn't hire anyone to help because no one knew how to do this and we couldn't train in production because it was too expensive and we got too far behind. So it's really difficult to run a business without help. The demand is there. People want upholstery. People want to pay money for upholstery. There's just not enough people to help sustain the demand. So I'm trying to teach as many people as I can with whatever time I have possible, I do this as a part-time job. I'm also a full-time marketing consultant. So I do a lot to try and get people to learn this as much as possible. If you're looking to earn a little bit of extra money, this is something you can do from your home. I lived in a 900 square foot house with a family of five. I did it in my backyard on nice days uh, with all my tools in the, the teeny tiny garden shed out back. So this is something you can do. You don't have to do it alone. I'm here to help support you. I have a group on Facebook called the Local Upholstery Club. You can join that. It's free. If you are working on a project and you get stuck, you can post a picture or a video. You can tag me in it and I'll help answer it for you. But there's a lot of pros in that group. 
So there are people there who are looking for those, and there are people there who have been upholstering for decades, and everybody is there to support you on your journey through upholstery and learning the best way you can at your own pace without being overly critical. I find that the professional upholstery industry doesn't really take kindly to the DIY industry, and that makes it really difficult to breed new upholsterers, because <laughs> all of the people in the DIY industry are hungry for it, and they're excited for it, and they're amplified by it and those are the people you want to move into the industry and they're just kind of shunned for not knowing enough but these people forget that they didn't know something once too and a lot of these upholsters are also self-taught because the upholstery trade has been dying since mass production moved out of the united states so keep that in mind we need more upholsters okay we're going to put more paint on this chair and i don't think <coughs> We're gonna need 10 coats like I thought. I think it's maybe gonna be four or five. As soon as we get the rest of the white on here, we'll be good to go. I'm gonna flip this around actually. It makes it easier for you guys to see. Alright, starting back at the front here. I'm not trying to slather on paint. I want this to go on as thin as possible. Now that the layers are building up, I'm going to go um, almost right away to get the paint off of the high points here because I want to see the green through there, but I do want it to build up everywhere else. So I put on these super thin coats and then I go back through and I wipe them down with a, mic a damp microfiber cloth and it helps the finish build up nice and smooth without brush strokes. It feels nice and silky smooth, but it also sort of gives it a vignette. When you do this with like 10 colors, it looks really cool. Um, this is, we're just using gold and white for this and there'll be some gold leafing after. I just really want these shoes to look elegant. If you um, saw what they looked like before, sort of this sort of 90s um, red tapestry, weird mauve um, color. I mean, it was not weird. It's just like, it looks, it was dated. Dated and all the upholstery was starting to wear away. And I'm sure that when they were done originally that they looked gorgeous, but they were aging and the fabric was dated. And I wanted to make them look fresh and elegant. And this is me trying to will spring into existence. So we'll see how we do. Yeah, I think we're only going to need like four coats here. Maybe five. This is the third. But as I told you before, once you get a couple coats laid down, this paint starts to go on smoother because the first couple coats it's going on the sanded surface, so it's absorbing. And once it's absorbed, it creates a slicker surface. Now it's flat paint, so it's absorbing the paint that goes on top of it. So you don't need to sand it as much if you're putting it on thin coats. But um, don't have a solid build up, which is what we need for most of the areas. This one I think I'm going to put on a little bit heavier too. Not too heavy though because you want it to dry before you come back to it or else it won't cure when you go to put another coat on. If you're painting thicker coats like with a paintbrush, then you're going to want to wait like 24 hours between coats. And this is just a much faster process. I'll be done painting this whole chair. What time is it? By noon. 
and then we'll be upholstering it shortly thereafter, starting with the foam and fabric. And I want to try and do it quickly because I want to get to the fabric so that you guys can see it. So what you might see me kind of rushing through some steps. We did upholster one of these chairs on live already. So the foam and batting process is, is already up on YouTube in the live replay section. Um, so you can watch the whole thing, it's uncut. You can browse through the parts that you want to watch. So we'll kind of breeze through the parts that I've already recorded and put up there so that we can get to the good stuff, which is putting on the fabric. Beautiful floral and velvet, like green, mossy green fabric. really start to see the coats building up at this point. Water. With water, I can kind of reactivate some of this paint that's already down on the board and use that. So this doesn't use a ton of paint. If you've got a tiny little tester of paint, that would work. I have this big gallon because we painted the trim in our house, and I was like, mm, this would be a pretty color. <laughs> so I just have a lot of this leftover paint, but I could do a whole set of six chairs out of a tester paint with this method. Saves on paint. So you don't have to do this. You can also use um, the latex paint as the wash paint. We did that with the gold. Works just as well as acrylic. You just gotta water it down a little bit so that it can fall into those details. I see a lot of people with those like Dawn dish soap spray bottles of water too to help them paint them off. Maybe. They have them at, um, they have this spray bottle. I don't know if you've seen the Dawn dish soap spray bottles, but they're like, tsh, it's almost like an aerial spray, but it's like a pump spray bottle. Aerosol, not aerial, aerosol spray. But it's a spray bottle, it's very cool. Uh, they have them at Sally's Beauty Supply with the hair dye bottles. I saw them. I didn't get one when I was there, but I need to get one because they're really useful for paint projects, for sure. I'm just getting an area that kind of was dry and sticky to move around. Any direction is fine because the way that we're painting, we're smoothing everything out. You won't feel any of these paint strokes. So you can spread it out in any way you need. It's kind of almost just like putting thin layers of lotion on your chair. to support not just my business but all of the people who are learning to do this to earn money who are learning through me so you're supporting small business in general and you're helping to build up the upholstery industry by engaging in this line so when you're here you've got a couple of seconds on your hand whenever I remind you to just like tap the like button as much as you can the last um, couple of lives we got over a hundred thousand likes so that's always the goal that's the new goal every time is to get to 100,000 likes. So if you have a minute right now, just kind of take some time and tap the screen as violently as possible. And that is going to help. Oh, you guys can't even see anything. Sorry about that. That is going to help drive my content to the For You page, which helps people find what it is that I do. And it helps me sell my classes and it helps other people learn upholstery so that they can do this for money too. So you don't have to spend any money. All I require is your time and your tapping. And I really appreciate it. It really goes a long way. I started Loco a little over two years ago after I closed my business so that I could teach as many people how to do this as possible. And I've already taught more than 300 people, many of them coming back for more. 
And now we've started virtual upholstery lessons where you're learning from me live through Zoom, uh, working on your own project. So we're reaching out to people all over the world now. And that is very cool. And if you need help on your project, my virtual upholstery lessons are exactly uh, the kind of thing that you can try out to see if that's like a, a learning method that is appropriate for you. Not everybody can learn well over a screen. But I do find that people find my classes very easy to follow. Plus you're in a classroom with six other or five other, other individuals with different projects. So you're not just learning the fundamentals of your project, but you're learning from everybody else's as well. Right now, if you've never taken a virtual class with me before, you can use the discount code first class at checkout and it will take your $75 class down to a dollar. Each upholstery class is three hours long, which allows you a lot of time with me to work on your project. <clears throat> but you can get buy three of them and get one free if you think your project is going to take more than one class. Or more than a few and I you can send me email me a picture of your project and I can give you a rough idea but what I will say is everybody works at their own pace so you're not expected to start or finish at any particular point in time you're encouraged to work at your own pace at what you're comfortable with that's good that guy closed as soon as I finish painting this top part I'll answer some questions I to do on the other chair, I tried to put gold glaze on it again after painting it white, but I didn't, uh, I put it on over the flat finish and it made the whole thing yellow. So I had to paint it again and then I had to cover it with wax and I still have to go back and put more gold in the details. That's the point of the second chair. Really starting to see this white build up. These areas. And I don't like to sand things uh, to make them look like rustic. I just prefer this wiping technique because it looks like things wore away naturally. Because that's kind of how things wear away, is getting washed and cleaned and used and handled over time. So I think this gives a more realistic look to, to it being aged or antiqued. When you do it with lots of different colors, this is just going to be gold and white. But when you do it with lots of different colors, it's, it's magical. I like doing pinks and purples and blues and blacks. Blues. Or blues and greens and yellows and blacks and deep blues. I've got a lot of cool projects that I've done like this. I also like to mix rust with them from time to time. Now we'll go back through, and not a lot of this layer is coming off at all because we have more surface area of flat paint that is sticking to and building up, but it will take it down off the high spots still. So these flowers, and the edges, and when those rub down, they rub down to the gold that we put on there. So makes it look like a little gold rim on it, which is fun. This also dampens the whole wood for when you go back through and mix the mix a little paint a little smoother. So I'm thinking like one more layer and then we'll put it on a little heavier and then probably give a white bit in small increments as I go. are probably hearing the loud noises of the wood shop right behind us. I'm teaching 
teaching this live from my local maker space. This is where I teach all my classes. I don't have my own shop. I can't fit this stuff in my house. My house is too small. But I can come here and pay a monthly fee to utilize these resources. So MakerWorks here in Ann Arbor is 14,000 square feet of workshop. We have a full-fledged wood shop with CNC tools, lathes, um, drum sanders, all the expensive tools you need to do stuff like this. Full-fledged metal shop. We have a textiles area. We have laser cutters, 3D printers. If it can be made, it can be made at MakerWorks. We have powder coating booths, all kinds of things. Stuff that we should have when we run a business. Um, and so I have access to all those tools at any time. I can also reserve this classroom to teach classes or to work on my own projects privately. And as an all access member, I have access to the shop until like all hours of the day 24 hours of the day, seven days a week, even on holidays, whenever I want to come in. is like $220 a month, which is nothing if you're running your business out here like I do, because there's, that's your overhead. You don't have to pay electric, you don't have to pay gas, you don't have to pay for the internet, the printers, or the staff, or the maintenance. You just pay your monthly membership and you come with all those things. But they also have a lot of opportunities for people who don't have a membership here, so you can take any kind of class here to learn how to use any of the tools. We do make and takes, and craft nights, and all kinds of Chances are you have a place like this near you, too. All right, we're going to do another coat. I'm going to read some questions, though, first. Let me flip this around. Uh, I think I only see one. I have an antique headboard I need to redo. Battlestar Celestica. I hope that you do. I can definitely help with that. I've done a ton of headboards. I did this professionally um, for six years out of my own fab shop. My husband's a metal fabricator and a wood fabricator, and I did upholstery and furniture restoration. I learned how to do this by teaching myself. I started off doing it as a hobby, making myself stuff. People liked what I did and wanted to buy it from me, so I started making it to sell it. And this is before Facebook Marketplace, so Facebook Marketplace didn't exist, although they did have groups. So when I started to notice that people liked it, I started taking on residential clients, which led to us taking on interior designers, which led to us taking on architects and contractors, and we blew up very quickly. We were in fabricators for six years, um, and we ended up closing our business two years ago because we couldn't sustain the demand by ourselves. We couldn't wear all the hats uh, without any help, and we needed more upholsterers, and we needed more fabricators to help us do what we did, but we didn't have anybody, so here I am training as many people as I can and maybe one day I'll get back to doing it. My dream is to have like a tattoo shop but for furniture. So you come in, you pick a piece off the wall, you pick your material, pick your artist, and that person will create a piece of art for you. That's my dream. Maybe one day we'll get back to that. But I can't do it without your guys' support and all I ask when you're in here and you're learning something is that you tap the screen as much as possible when you uh, when I remind you to do it, a little heart is going to appear up here and it's going to run on a meter and when it gets to the end and throw your party. It's a ton of fun. I'm here today doing this. I'm usually here on Tuesdays doing upholstery for free as a tutorial, just working through the projects, whatever I'm working on at the time, answering your questions along the way. So if you have questions about upholstery or your project or my project, I'm happy to answer them. Until then, I'm just going to continue working on the paint. We're going to get another solid coat on this. This one I'm going to put on a little bit heavier and I might find myself wiping away uh, in between like sections this time so that it doesn't dry too fast because now right now this is dry dry. Like I'm scratching it with my nails. It's not coming off. It still needs to cure but it's dry enough to touch and handle with my hands and move around because we've just been putting on these really thin coats.
So now I'm taking smaller brush strokes to apply more paint in one area because I don't want these to look messy. And I might go back over the whole length of the leg in single light brush strokes because if this is my final layer, I don't want to feel a brush strokes. white in this, or gold in this one than the Kennedy So I definitely need to go back through and see what I'm going So this, I'm not really doing the dry brush technique anymore, because this is my final coat, but it's still very thin. I'm just dipping the brush a little bit. business shower on Saturday so you can come visit us at her shop which is brand new or you can join us live here on TikTok you can follow the link in my bio to help her uh, achieve the items on her wish list in time for her small business shower or you can donate money to her directly right right from that link uh, her Venmo is right inside there so if you want to help Elevate a small business when they are brand, brand new, they open March 1st, then you can help us through our small business shower. Any little bit helps, even if you can only toss her five bucks. Any buildup of capital that she can get early on will help make sure she can stay in business as long as possible. It's very hard for small businesses these days to start up with no capital. She has the opportunity to have a good idea, to be the only one in town to do it, and to have a city who is trying to put new small businesses in their downtown area. So she got a really great opportunity to do this, and I want to make sure she succeeds. So we're throwing her a small business shower, just like a baby shower, but for small business. So you can go and contribute to that, and we'd love to see you out there if you are in driving distance of Albion, Michigan. The address is on the link in my bio, Small Business Shower for Up and Up Upholstery. So you can uh, head over there and get involved because it's going to take all of us, it's going to take this whole village to save this industry. I'm doing that wipe we talked about before, just after we've done these small sections because I don't want it to dry too quickly before I'm able to do it and smooth it out. I think just one more coat after this. It's almost the build up that we need. It <coughs> helps to be an environment that is uh, really good for drying paint. At this particular makerspace, we have full heat in the winter. This 14,000 square foot shop is well heated in the winter and well air conditioned in the summertime. So it's always really comfortable to work in. Thanks so far. Let me know what you think in the comments. I probably won't do too much painting on here again. I didn't want to do it to begin with. Today I was going to work on that recliner, but I did notice that it was missing a piece. 
and it almost made me cry. So, back to the palette cleanser project. That's a whole thing. I like to call these my palette cleanser projects because they're projects that I know I'm going to be good at right away. So, and they're quick, so I can do them, feel good about myself, and go back to the hard stuff. So they don't have to be about what I'm currently working on. I've been doing upholstery for 12 years, 10 of those years professionally. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about doing upholstery or entering the industry. Tell me any horror stories of being in the business. There's a lot. taking me 24 hours between coats. It's just you're laying on these layers so super thin that they're drying in between and building up. They never get, like, you can't leave a fingerprint in them. <laughs> they never get that tacky. They just sort of dry right up. Of course, I'm using flat paint that helps. It's kind of like the same as painting with chalk paint. Chalk paint is just latex paint with the uh, like a plaster of Paris type material in it. It's a hardener that is also really flat and absorbent. Makes it easier to finish projects that uh, you don't have to do as much prep work. Is what I mean. I've only used chalk paint a couple of times on that. It's not a paint. I like flat paint. I like to be able to move the material. And for me, chalk paint is just too thick and gritty and good like reconstituted itself so I couldn't layer colors on as well. Just didn't work with my style of painting, but you know, I could be more flexible too, I suppose. All of these brush strokes going on, like the last couple layers, have to be really smoothed out, thinned out, so that you don't see them. Because you don't have to go in any specific direction, but just smooth it
bottom there this whole time. I like the term palette cleanser project. It's nice to have a reliable project during hard one. Yeah, you have to, so uh, upholstery is really difficult and you can lose confidence very easily if there's like, you run into a sag that you don't understand. So I like to have a project nearby that I know that I'm good at that will turn over quickly and that has some fun creative aspects to it so that I can sort of recharge that battery. And get back to the work work. I'm going to take you guys on tour of this maker space. I just put on that pretty gold paint, which is why I go back through after the very last thing I do after the wax is I put more gold paint.
Lost the feed. Oh no! Can you guys see me now? Because it looks like everything is still going. Oh, I see hearts. It looks like it's working. Thanks, guys. Keep the hearts coming for sure. The more you guys tap and like on this, it sends my content out to the For You page, and that's how people find me. That's how I run my business. So I appreciate it. Okay, let's take a look. I'm going to flip this around. Give you guys close up of some of the details. So the gold is starting to get like buried away in the paint. And it's still not as opaque as I would like it to be in some areas. So this is what we're working with. I think one more coat is gonna work. Top part. A little bushel of flowers. This is such a like cute little floral themed set. I'm so excited. But this is the goal. This is where we're getting to. And even this needs more gold still. This is sort of how opaque it is in the solid parts. And I want to put gold leaf on these raised parts. I'm going to put gold leaf here and then potentially gold leaf here, but not like solid gold leaf. I want it to be a little chipped away. But the difference between this leg, this is the opaqueness that we're going for, and this leg. You can still see we're about one coat away. So I'm going to give you guys a tour of the makerspace. So this <coughs> This is the conference room. This is where I teach my uh, in-person upholstery workshops, where I do my local lives. And it's also a common use classroom. So they teach other classes in here, but you can also reserve this for events. I did a craft night here the other night. We did rug tufting. You can reserve it for events, your projects. You want to work on privately, <coughs> other classes. I promise I won't drink my Gatorade the whole way. Let's move out into the front area. Okay. So this is the area where you come in. Nova will be here to help at the front desk when you enter, and then you'll see a list of available classes for the week up here. But you can also see a list of classes that are available as far back as we schedule them. Up in this area is our jewelry studio, where we have top of the line equipment to make jewelry in. Our um, maker in residence, Jalisa, runs classes out of this classroom. There's CNC mill slash lathe. We do pewter sand casting, centrifugal wax casting. Uh, we got blow torches. Metalworking tools, kilns, a uh, plaster investment thing. I can't remember what it's called. I did take a class in here once. I can use the centrifugal wax caster. Um, we have 3D printers, both filament and resin that you can use. And then through this area, it looks like it's closed, the electronic studio. So you can use all of this electronics equipment to work on any electronics you might have. There's also a PCB circuit board cutter here. So you can cut your own circuit boards too, which is nuts. Here we have heat presses that go with the large format vinyl cutter. 
and we have material here that you can purchase to use. These are here available for members to use anytime they want, but we have classes where you can come and use them too. We have two laser cutters, two epilogue laser cutters where you can make cool stuff like this. They cut all different types of material and there's all the instructions on how to use it are here. You have to take a safety class to learn how to use it. But after you take that class, you can come use it whenever you want. And I will tell you, it is as simple as sending a file to print. This will give you all the guidelines on different materials and then the settings that the laser has to be on for that material. Through this way, we have the textiles area with all kinds of sewing machines, industrial machines, CNC embroidery machine more 3D printers. These offices here to the side are small businesses that lease out these spaces to run their businesses. So aside from having a membership here, you can also, if there's when there's space available, which it is uh, in high demand, you'll have these offices available to lease out, to hold your stuff. Maybe we'll get lucky and see one open. We've got a robotics team. Here we go, little peek. That's one of the studios that work at uh, these offices. We have storage, so you don't have to haul your projects home. This is long-term storage where you get your own key. You can rent them out by the month. Then we have short-term storage. Back here, we have the wood shop. Or no, I'm sorry, metal shop, not wood shop. Metal shop, we have an iron worker. We have uh, drum sanders, we've got a CNC plasma cutter which makes metal signs like this, dinosaurs like this, and if you have a membership you can come and use these tools whenever you want. This is a very expensive machine, I know because I used to own one, and it's not something that you can just do in your garage because it shoots pure energy out of a hose and cuts metal as thick as two inches. We have the welding studio. Here, horizontal bandsaw, drill presses, mills, lathes, we have CNC mills and lathes. These are all for metalworking. So if you're into metalworking, you don't own these tools, you can come here anytime and use these. That's the beauty of it. Powder coating booth, sandblaster. If you don't know what powder coating is, it's basically this like hard enamel finish on a lot of metal stuff. Um, you electrify it in this booth. You connect an electrical current to it. You spray this powder on it. The powder sticks to it. You put it in the oven and it cures. Now we're moving into the wood shop. Really cool dust collection system. It's loud. Got the saw stop, which you cannot physically cut your hands on. It's impossible. We have planers, jointers. Ella's working on the CNC. Band saws, all the clamps you could ever want with a glue up station. And then we have cool lathe. Every sander you could possibly imagine. Router table. Very cool stuff. And then this will take us back into the conference room where we just were. And that should have given us enough time to paint another coat on this chair. So let's get one more coat on this, shall we? Thank you guys so much for being here and liking. I'm at 22%. I don't know if we're going to get to the upholstery today because my phone is about to die. But we're going to get through this last coat. And then we'll get to the upholstery part later. I'm going to get the foam and batting part done before the next one so that you guys don't have to watch that again. This 
one I'm not going to wipe down until after it dries. So, and I'm going to use a dry microfiber cloth because it's going to work like sandpaper and buff the whole thing down. And it'll buff off the thin spots, so I still see that green coming through. But it'll leave on all the opaque parts. And you'll notice my strokes are much more intentional now, much smoother. And this is so I don't see any brush strokes. And the coat's still thin. It's just layered. Thank you guys for sharing. I see people sharing it in here. I appreciate that. Any engagement that you can do while you're in here is beneficial to helping people find my business, which is teaching people how to do upholstery. Today we're learning how to paint the frame before we do the upholstery so we don't ruin the very precious, only green velvet fabric that we have to work with. So I'm going to get this finish on first. Ready? 
the new coat of paint tends to move the old coat of paint around. That's why I want to make sure it's dry between coats. And that's also why I make sure that I put on as thin coats as possible so that they dry faster, more completely. And this is the last coat. Still dry all the way before we go through it with another microfiber cloth, but that one's going to be dry. And that one's almost going to work like sandpaper this time. It's going to knock back all the really thin layers to show the green and the gold underneath. And it's going to knock back all of the little dust particles or brush strokes or anything you might feel to make it buff it up and make it nice and smooth and ready for wax. And then I'll put wax on it. I mean, not today. It's going to cure all the way. Um, we'll put wax on it and then I'm going to put more gold paint and then gold leafing over top of that. I want these to look elegant. Um, the last thing I did was kind of creepy, which I love. I'm trying to show my range here, people. I do too. Okay, so I'm Inside the legs. I forget them all the time. That is it for paint. For now. Oh, we forgot the paint. Almost did. better through the screen if they match than I can like in person because it just brings out more detail.
como esta. Now we have really good opacity in the same areas that we have up here. Now all we have to do is sort of remove a little bit of the paint that we just put down with microfiber after it's had a little bit of time to dry. And that'll be a dried microfiber cloth. Let me show you some of my favorite parts. usually catch these lives when you're much further along. Glad to be able to see earlier steps. So yeah, we're kind of doing these uh, backwards. So I did this one uh, here while you guys weren't looking. Uh, we did the upholstery together, but I did the fabric together beforehand. One, to give you guys an idea of what the after is supposed to look like. <clears throat> and two, to make sure that I can run through it smoothly over live. And I am getting down to about 15%. So this is as far as we're going to get today, but I want to give you a close up here and Alicia you can catch the live replays of these on YouTube so you can see all the steps up to the fabric point on this chair too it doesn't have the paint but it has the foam uh, the jute webbing the foam the batting and then I put the fabric on after but that's what we're gonna be doing on these lives this is my favorite bit the top that's what I want everything to look like when it's done and right here so here you can see the green underneath and the gold and the white and it all sort of just like blends in together. That's the gold. Right now this is too opaque. You see it's filled, a lot of the gold areas filled up. We're going to come back through with a dry microfiber to get some of those areas to stand out more. But we got to let it dry a little bit first because if we try doing that it's just going to get gummy. So this is the end goal, only we're going to put a little bit more gold in the details. And I just got a text from Lynn. I don't know if she said that because if I check it, we're going, to, we're going to lose, disconnect our life. But, but we are trying to raise money and awareness for Lynn. She is opening up her first upholstery business on March 1st is her grand opening in Albion, Michigan. So this Saturday we're throwing her a small business shower right out of her shop and you can join us. You can join us in person or you can join us uh, live on TikTok. I have a link in my bio that says up and up upholstery um, small business shower so you can go check out her wish list and you can donate to her Venmo through that. Anything we can do to help give her a leg up as she gets started that's going to make her more successful and will help out this business immensely. So that's it for me today, you guys. Let me turn this over. Nope, oh, wrong button. All right. Okay, so my name's Kim. I teach upholstery. Today we went through painting the frame of the chair that I have to upholster next. And the next time you see this chair, we're going to be putting on the fabric and the weld. It'll have all the foam and everything. If you missed all the steps up to this part, you can go over to YouTube and you can see my live replays there. They're all uncut, so you can see all of the steps and hear the answers to all the questions. The only trick is it's like four to five hours long. So you got to pick through the good stuff. But I think that YouTube breaks it down a little bit for you so that you can digest it in smaller chunks. But it's there, so if you want to learn all the steps up to this part then you can see that over on YouTube right now. And then next week we'll come back and we're going to be putting fabric and welt on this chair so you can see how we cut and apply a single welt and how we make cuts to fit our fabric around the frame. Thank you guys so much for all the likes. Don't forget about Lynn. Go support her and help uh, support small business. Alicia, that's so kind of you to say. She says, I appreciate your content. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you want to join, I have a um, free group on Facebook called the Lulco Upholstery Club. And it's just a private group on Facebook where we're all upholstery enthusiasts. A lot of us are still learning. We have some pros in there who are available to help. But if you're working on a project from home and you get stuck, 
you can tag me in it. Post a picture or video, tag me in it, and I'll be happy to answer your question. Lots of other pros that will be happy to answer your questions too. Uh, we get a lot of great advice in those, but we don't. We have a no soliciting and no um, unsolicited advice <laughs> rule. So no one's going to be there to cut you down. It's a very supportive group that is trying to get people from beginners to pro. So join that group if you want to learn more about upholstery. I teach in-person workshops four days a week here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So you can even come out here and do a whole weekend. My classes are buy three, get one free. So you can do four classes, three hours each for 225 bucks. So make a whole weekend out of it. Bring a friend for free. All my classes are bring a friend free. I also teach upholstery, a virtual upholstery workshops two days a week on Monday evenings and Saturday afternoons. So you can learn upholstery directly from me then. It's a six person class, so up to six people can join. And you're learning from me live virtually directly with help on your specific projects. And you're not just learning from your projects, you're learning from six other people's projects as, or five other people's projects as well. So there's a lot of really cool fundamentals you can learn from that. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm out of breath. I am <clears throat> having difficulty with my heartburn lately. So it is becoming difficult for me to continue talking on my phone saying anyway. So I'm cutting out early today. But you guys can catch this live replay later this week over on YouTube. Thanks so much for joining. We'll see you guys later.